So we're here at the park where I had stopped to get my daughter back from the family friends that she had been staying with for a week. And we're in this park in Mississippi. It's a beautiful lake and everything. There were two dogs here. One was very well groomed, very plump, very well fed. And there's a house across the street that it obviously belongs to. It ran right back up to the house and on the porch. But this other little brown dog over here is laying by itself in the grass. It looks very skinny, doesn't look taken care of. I don't think it belongs to anybody. It doesn't belong to that house. I think it might be a stray. So I'm going to go see if it will let me touch it and pet it. Come here, baby. Oh, I have treats in the car. Lily, give me the treats that are about your feet. It's a girl. Yeah. Come here, baby. Oh, I think she's scared. limping. It's a tree. Yeah, come get it. It's a tree. Come get it. Here you go, baby. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tree. Come get it. Oh, she's licking her lips. Here you go. Come get it. Come on, baby. Come on, let's get down. Let's get down and just wait. Come here, baby. Come here. Well, the other one wants to oh, come. Oh, no. Hi, honey. Yeah, this is a stray. Hello. You boy or girl? You a girl. I think you girl. Yeah, you a girl. You a good girl. Oh, it's so soft. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Oh, I know you wouldn't come. Let's see if we can get this other one. Come here. Poor baby. Let's not scare her into the water. Come here. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, oh it's whining. Yeah. See the way it's running. Poor baby. Get out of the water. What are you doing? This one is playing in the water. Well. Oh. That one definitely is sweet. <laughs> Wonder what type it is. Yeah. Can't save every puppy. Some puppies just don't want to come to people. Yeah. That's unfortunate. If only we could talk to them and tell them that I we're know. trying to help if only them. I could put that image in their head and convey to them that I'm here to help you. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. Yep, maybe next time. Hey, big family. Um, we we stopped just a minute ago to, and mom found a another stray. It was a stray cat this time, and she um she like it was a black cat. It was completely stray, and she went over to it to try and give it some food. Um, it was a very scared cat though. Uh, so it ran off in the woods. But we left some food. We're pretty sure it went back and ate the food. But so that's two strays. There was the brown dog that we tried to uh, tried to rescue, and then there was the cat. So two strays in one day. We haven't even made it home. <laughs> well, we made it back from the ER. How was it? <laughs> Um, <laughs> long. <laughs> yeah, this is the damage, folks. Yeah. Yeah. It's rough, but we got we got it gum. She debreed it. He debreed the skin off of it, and we got it all cleaned and ointmented and wrapped and instructions on how to take care of it. And now we are at Sonic because we deserve some ice cream, don't we, girl? We yes. do. We deserve a treat for going through all that. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna get us a terrible. goodie, and then and then we're gonna head to the house. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. What a beautiful, sunny, windy day. Let's go check the greenhouse and see how my plants are doing. I haven't, uh, to be real honest, I haven't been out here in <laughs> a while. I haven't watered them in probably a week. <laughs> but it hasn't been that hot or sunny, so see, they're doing good. Yeah, the soil's still moist. Honestly, I don't think they need any water. They're not growing along as fast as I'd like them to because, again, it's not very warm and sunny. But, I mean, they are coming. They are coming along just at a slower rate. 
and something is eating this Blue Ridge kale. Y'all see that? Little grasshoppers or something are after that kale. I don't know if that kale is going to make it to the dirt. <laughs> Kohlrabi's getting nice and big. Okay, all the cabbage is coming along. All the Joy Choy cabbage finally got some leaves going on there. And all these carrots want to go in the ground. I know they do. They desperately want to see the dirt. I've got to make my way around this big old rose right here to go to see the carrots. Hmm. Yeah, the carrots might actually need some water. Yeah, they look a little bit dry. They need some water. Not the happiest or most lush looking lately because, again, they want to see the dirt. I'm going to get them planted. I promise. I'm going to get them planted. Got some more rutabagas. The fennel still alive. Again, it um, some things in here are a little drier than others, so fennel could use some water. Onions could use some water. This whole tray right here, Paris Island romaine lettuce, the seeds were too old, not a single lettuce came up. So I'm going to have to plant something different in here. Over here on the other side, same thing happened with these three trays, Tejama lettuce, Harmony lettuce and coastal star romaine lettuce. Not a single thing germinated in all three of these because the seeds, we just kept them too long. They were just too old. And that's okay. That happens. Top bunch collards are coming along. Got all my twister white cauliflower and my deep, deep purple, deep purple, deep purple cauliflower. <laughs> Olympus carrots. Again, more carrots. <laughs> Mustard greens. The mustard greens are getting happy on me. They're getting happy fast. I've got a decent germination on parsley. That was old parsley seed. It was a use it or lose it situation. So I went ahead and planted the parsley. I got like half germination on that. Uh, turnips, pretty decent. All top turnips looking great. Green magic broccoli, of course. Snowball cauliflower was a bit of an old seed. And I've got all this these missing cells where they didn't germinate. I've got spotty germination on this cauliflower and hardly any germination on the early flat Dutch cabbage because again, older seed, but that green magic broccoli is just rocking. So yeah, I think I need to get some watering done on some of these. Some of these are a little drier than others. So let me get that watered real quick. So here I am with Ellie girl, or as we call her, Ellie belly. And I'm just loving on her and checking on her. So she has been uh, sluggish. She has been laying around. And look at that belly, y'all. Y'all see this? Ooh, mama. It won't be long now. It will not be long till she has those babies. So we've just been petting her, feeding her a lot, and snuggling on her, but I've been reading up, y'all, I've been reading up a lot on bulldog births, um, specifically because she is a bulldog pit bull mix, and I've been reading up on those, and I'm kind of nervous about what I've been reading, y'all. I've been reading and watching on videos that French bulldogs, especially, and she is part French bulldog, part pit bull, um, they have trouble whelping on their own. They have trouble giving birth naturally. So, um, because of their, you know, narrow hips, they usually are supposed to have a scheduled C-section. We didn't schedule a C-section <laughs> and she's pretty close. <laughs> and I'm wondering if we should schedule a C-section, if there's enough time to do so, or if, um, but here's the thing, I don't, I don't know her due date. I would have to ask the vet, like, because um, we made a random guess, or our vet made a guess, um, that she was about 35 days long when he saw her. Le and that was a couple weeks ago. Um, so we're getting pretty close. So he would have to make like an educated guess on a due date because I wasn't there when the puppies were conceived. So I don't know what her due date would be. So we'd have to make a guess on that. And um, I, I just don't know, should we schedule the C-section or should we see if she can do it on her own? Because some, some can uh, do the birth naturally on their own. So maybe she's one of them. Maybe Ellie Billy can, can crank this out. Maybe she's got it. But if she doesn't, and if she struggles or has trouble, we're gonna be right here, Ellie. We're gonna be right here for you. We're gonna get you the help you need. We're gonna support you. And we're gonna try to do this, okay? 
We're going to try to get your doge babies out of your belly. And he did say that she he, she only had like two, maybe three, when he palpated and he like felt all around her womb and stuff. He said he felt two pups, maybe three. And something that we have going for us in our favor is that she has had babies before. She's done this before. <clears throat> and I do not believe it was a C-section because she was not a well taken care of dog. She was a, you know, she was in rough condition when we found her. So that leads me to believe that Ellie Belly here did give birth naturally before on her own. That's what I have concluded from this. So I think Miss Ellie can do this. Yeah, I think you can, because I think you've done it before. So I've got every confidence in you, baby. I've got every confidence and every faith in you. But if you struggle and if you need my help, I'll be right here. And y'all know, as y'all saw on that, that video where I had to intervene with, um, with Missy Goat, I have had to intervene with animals before and help them out and help manually deliver. So <clears throat> if it came to it, I would help manually deliver these puppies to the best of my ability. But she is so, so miserable and tired and she's about over this pregnancy, y'all, and I can relate. Y'all, she's she's just tired. She's laying down every day. Her appetite has dropped. I'm going to take her temperature because supposedly, from what I read online, again, I'm going off of what I read because I'm not a vet, um, I read that if she has a drop in temperature, that means that within the next, like, 12 hours, she's going to go into labor. So I'm going to see if her temperature dropped, and we're going, she, yeah. But if she shows any signs of shivering, shaking, nesting, panting, pacing around frantically, that means labor is happening. It is go time. So I haven't seen any of that. She just really just lays on her bed in this bathroom, nice and safe and cozy. She lays in here all day. That's what Ellie Billy does. She lays around. She gets up to get water, get food and potty, and then she goes and lays back down. So she is a very pampered little woman right now. We're trying to keep her as comfortable as possible. And I can absolutely relate, honey. I know the misery of the last trimester. I understand. Yeah. I understand exactly how that feels, Mama. You are just over it. You're heavy. You're tired. Any of y'all mamas out there, anybody who's had a baby, y'all understand what she's going through. She is feeling the misery. <laughs> She's just like, uh, can we get this over with? She's so tired. And she doesn't want to come out of the bathroom. She doesn't really want to play. She wants us to come in here and love on her. And that's about it. She just, like I said, barely gets up from her bed anymore. So she's just a tired mama. And that's okay. And that's okay, babe. You earned it. Yeah, you earned it. And we're going to help you have those babies. We're going to help you. I'm going to check on her a whole month, y'all. But first, I'm going to take her temperature just to kind of see... If we're really, really close, or are we just like a week out? So let's see what we got. <laughs> you are something else. Oh, you are something else. Little character. Your little character. Yeah, I'll rub your belly. I'll rub your belly. That's her saying she wants the belly rubs. She wants all the belly rubs. All the belly rubs. Oh, and a nice back rub. Yeah. Oh, and get the belly rubs some more. Get the belly some more. Yeah. I think she 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 either has a small litter because that's really wide on that side. She either has just two pups and it's a very small litter, or uh, she's just got a room to grow here and she's got to get a little wider and a little bigger. Unfortunately, oh that's gonna be miserable if you have to get wider. If you have to get any bigger, that's gonna be miserable. Yeah, I hope you just have a small litter. I hope you go into labor soon and just have a small litter. That'd be nice, huh? Can you just go into labor soon and have just two tiny babies? Just two. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet Ellie Belly. Okay, so I just took Ellie's temperature and it was 100.5. And that's actually within normal range for her breed, for a doggy. That's in normal range. Um, so that means that it has not dropped to human temperature, which would be 98.6. So that means that we are not in eminent... Uh, labor here that means she's not going to go into labor in the next 12 hours thank goodness so um that's good that her body temperature has not dropped so we have a little bit of time but i'm just going to stay in here with sweet ellie and i'm going to keep snuggling her and pampering her she just wants me to keep touching her if i stop touching her she squiggles onto my lap a little more and she wants me to touch her more and love on her more so 
I'm going to love on Ellie for a minute and just try to ease her, her heaviness and her, and her weariness. And we're going to snuggle and we're going to play for a minute. Yeah, we're going to snuggle and roll around and play. I love you and I'm excited about your babies coming. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah, you're excited to be a mama again, huh? Yeah. And y'all, every time it's pouring down rain like this, every time the weather's bad or it's freezing cold outside, I always instantly, like what jumps to my mind instantly is, what if one of these babies, what if one of these puppy dogs was out in this? What if pregnant Ellie was out in this? In a bad storm, it's freezing outside and it's raining and she's a week or two at most away from giving birth to little tiny baby puppies. What if she would have been caught out in this storm? You know, I think about the ones that we haven't rescued yet that need help, that have no shelter out there. That's just what instantly jumps to mind when I think of bad weather or I see the bad weather or it's really cold or just not optimal conditions outside. I just think about, you know, what if the ones that are safe and happy and dry and warm, the ones that are living in our house, what if we hadn't, you know, saved them? So I know that's kind of a downer thought or a sad thought, but it's just always what I think about. Like, that's the conditions they would be in. That's the reality of it if we hadn't taken them in. That's what they would be living in. And I know there's, you know, billions of creatures outside in nature that live outside in this every day. That's their everyday reality. They just live outside. And I know they survive it just fine, but, you know, the ones that need help, the ones that aren't doing so well, their health is not so good, or they're old, or they're pregnant and about to give birth, these aren't optimal conditions outside, you know, and I want to give them the best life. I want to give them the happiest, snuggiest, warmest, you know, comfiest life. I want to give them the best optimal conditions. So I'm just grateful. Every time I see weather like this, I'm just, I'm grateful. I look at these babies, I snuggle them up. I kiss them, I hold them. I'm just really happy that we found them. And I've just got to show you all this real quick. This, what well, I just opened it in the mail just now. This was sent by a lovely subscriber of ours, a wonderful woman that follows our channel, loves us so much. I did not expect this, y'all. Y'all don't have to do things like this for me, but it just touches my heart so much when she does loving things like this. This woman is so sweet. Says, love me some piggies. And she pulled pictures of me a while ago at Chestnut Hills Farm when I got to love on their little baby piggies and it just thrilled my soul that day. Look at that happy piggy face. Do you do a piggy nose? That just made me so happy to hold a baby. And I remember that sweet baby. I remember that piggy. So this special thing that this lovely woman has sent me is going on my wall. I have hung it on my kitchen wall and I get to look at it every day. Thank you so much, sweetie. You know who you are. I love you. I'll see y'all later. Bye.